Hey guys, so as promised, here's a review of the Gundam GP04 Cobra. I'm sure that some of you that, uh, do not know about the existence of this suit because of how obscure it is. Uh, well, that's okay because most suits that Bandai released for the RE100 line are about suits that are not well known, are too expensive if released in MG. Uh, well, I mentioned indirectly earlier about how the RE100 line being cheaper to the um, MG line because of the less amount of engineering that is put into it and this can be seen uh, when building this kit because of the polycaps and serial parts and the assembly process that was used in this kit it felt similar to the previous RE100, the Gundam Mark III people who built the Mark III previously would not be foreign to the construction of this suit and there are also undergates for a huge part of this suit to you know hide the less revealing marks like the ones over here and several of the colored parts and just you know the whole suit in general one thing that I want to mention about the suit is how nice it looks with minimal detailing that has to be done by the user the color separation by itself is great with the variety of colors uh, that is used in this suit that makes it stand out with a bit of panel lining and some detailing that you can do with you know your paintbrush or your airbrush and the suit will no longer look very good just a bit more detailing so at the front wall so this is what you see this is the back and as you can see there's a lot of thrusters but well, that's because this suit was meant to be a high mobility mobile suit and does the boosters over here the thrusters at the back at the shoulders and the legs respectively now because of how back heavy this mobile suit would be because of how large its boosters are so there's a stand that's included to hold the suit up fine because I would imagine that there will be a lot of complaints if they made you know, such a huge looking suit and then there's no stand to support it and then you just fall on its back so mm, thanks Bandai on to the weapons, this Momo suit along with the other RE100 line suits you don't have a lot of them as can be seen as a cost cutting measure by Bandai to omit redundant and unnecessary weapons so the Momo suit comes with uh, the beam rifle itself and the beam GT which is basically a bayonet that's supposed to be attached onto the beam rifle itself over here I'm not sure if you can see here but it's supposed to be attached in this manner and it with like a bayonet slash you know short beam saber that's attached to the rifle for the mobile suit to use so it comes with this smaller beam uh, rifle kind of weapon which will make it more poseable because uh, of its smaller size and as you can see the beam rifle over here it blocks and inhibits the movement of the elbows for the mobile suit and I'm not sure if this is actually a beam rifle or some projectile based weapon and of course like all Earth Federation mobile suit it comes with beam sabers and the beam saber racks they go up and when they go down it clicks with the boosters itself as you can see there you see it clicks down here and you can go up and the beam sabers the beam sabers they can come out like this so that when the mobile suit comes and grab the beam saber it'll be easier for it so it's a nice little gaming that Bandai included which is a nice touch and oh yeah the mobile suit has a small antenna over here if you are wondering now the sad thing about this mobile suit is like what I just mentioned is the how long the rifle is which is kind of disappointing because when you want to make it hold up, it holds up fine but it's quite awkward over here, you can't bend the elbows but as seen from the manual, the mobile suit can go into this position which I have not been able to do so because of how difficult is it to pose it like this but that, that is why they give you this smaller rifle so it's easier to pose a bit so it has a relatively large shield which holds the ammunition for the weapon which is over here for the shield and here for the rifle itself well, they are quite similar to the ones found on the Gundam Mark III and then again I said that they used a lot of common parts so that it will save cost for Bandai the shield attach is similar to the Gundam Mark III as in this mechanism over here it's very similar to Gundam Mark III and it's secured by pack inside here you're supposed to just plug it into a hole to kill the shield this review will not be complete without comparison to its brother from the Gundam development project the GPO3 I do not have an MG GPO1 and the GPO2 um, 
because I those are very dated suits and I've been waiting for 2.0 uh, which you know there's a 2.0 of the Hyakushiki which make me you know which got my hopes up for a 2.0 of the GPO1 and GPO2 but now just comparing these two suits side by side first thing you can notice it's uh, some parts of it is quite common um, well namely the skirts and the crouch over here but I mean um, it's similar mainly because they are both Gundams but I mean they kind of look alike and mainly at the knees and the skirts over there just by comparing with one side you can see how much difference in details between the two Momo suits are and that shows the amount of engineering that has been put into the Gundam suits over the years by Bandai the comparison of these two suits show this is not even an MG, this is the MG and this is the Reborn 100 which is seen to be a more cost effective kit to produce they are good suits in their own right of course now on to the articulation of this suit now um because the length of the Momosu is heavy it just keeps falling out due to its weight now for the articulation of this suit the arms they go up maybe in 90 degrees we go up more well we can't really so that's the extent of its articulation the arms and for the legs can do a 180 no problem though the boosters might get in the way the ankles they rotate fine and they're quite stiff which is a good sign and the arms they hold the weapons up fine that's for sure but I mean <laughs> I'm not sure if this is the pose that you want to go for the thing that I don't like with this suit is that parts just keep falling out which kind of irritates me but I mean it's a model kit I mean I'm sure most of you would have see see I mean I'm sure most of you would have oh my god <sighs> yeah again I'm sure most of you are accustomed to this like I do in terms of polycaps this suit uses the same polycap runner I believe from the Gundam Mark 3 and this suit uses less polycaps compared to its Gundam Mark 3 brother so as you can see from the polycaps that are left over well the Gundam Mark 3 I think used almost everything and for the leftover parts I did not put on all the stickers you can see over here because I'm gonna do a painting job on this suit so I'll leave these stickers to the last one I might not use them and the decals I've not applied any yet and now for the extras on this suit you get one extra ammunition that I cannot find a place to put on and you get hands well extra hands you know of course beam sabers and the beam GT which I told you guys about now on to the manual now first of this suit it's not as complex in terms of engineering to the MGs like I've said so the construction is actually very simple and uh, well we have this very nice you know art detailing about all the parts give you guys a quick glance through the construction very simple construction here and I like how it comes on this full-blown manner uh, which shows the complexity of the suit and I like it to the arms now this suit is not too difficult to build it's good for beginners so beginners can just start off on this and if you're a veteran you can still do this suit, it's very enjoyable, I find. Nothing too bad should happen because it's not as complex as some of the MGs and PGs that I've built previously. Just beware of the steps that are required. Now this leg joint over here, they move back and forth. For some reason, I'm not too sure, you can leave it down in the comments below. Everything is very simple in just a few pieces. Now one thing about the boosters, you should take note of the positions of these pegs. 
mean, namely the E12, E22, E13, and E23. So you can see the this part, it's the thicker part, the one on the right. And I put it wrongly and kind of messed up myself. So just beware. Stickers which I've not applied, if you guys have noticed. And then again, I'm painting this suit, so I'll paint them first. So I'll paint it first before applying the stickers. And then the suit in it, in opposing glory, and you need an action base for this to make things easier. And a detailing sheet over here. We have a colored page over here, detailing the gimmicks of the suit, and it's poses, and anything guide. Now that wraps up the review of the GP04 Gerbra. Now do tell me if I have left out anything. Um, if you have any question, you can leave it down in the comment below. And if you like my video, please like it. And if you like what I do, then subscribe. It helps me a lot. And I'll have a review of the Shah Zaku 2 2015 and the Gundam G Self Assault Pack up very soon. So please check that out. Uh, then again, bye bye. <laughs>